If the oxygen sensors go bad, you might find one of these trouble codes listed on the screen. And the most common symptom is going to be rough idling. And you will get also a check engine light. Now, if you go on live data, you can see on sensor 1 the oscillations. This means the engine is running efficient. So basically the computer will make the engine to run a little bit lean, a little bit rich. Then we've got the short term fuel trim, which will show you the percentage of how much the deviation from zero the computer needs to do. If you see, for example, on oxygen sensor number two, the same waves like on sensor one, it means the catalytic converter is not doing anything. It's now another very important function of the oxygen sensor is to deliver long-term fuel trim. This will actually show you how much is the final calculation. And if, for example, you've got an air leak which persists for a long time, you will see it here. Let's take out this air filter housing. And if you have a look here, you're going to find the connector for the first oxygen sensor and the sensor itself here. And down there, you're going to see the second oxygen sensor. That one is responsible with the catalytic converter. Now, the first step is to unplug the connector and let this wire free in order to remove the sensor. So you need to remove these plastic clips around. So you basically need to press very hard on this. Okay, see, and it comes out. I use some silicone spray because this can get stuck since it's connected for a long time. All right, I've got here an oxygen sensor socket, okay? And I've got an adapter with this extendable wrench that will give me extra power, extra length. I'm gonna put some engine oil in this cap and you can put it around the sensor just a little bit. I'm gonna use some gloves to not hurt my hands. Looks like we got it loose. If it still doesn't want to come out with this method, then you can take a torch and warm up just a little bit the exhaust around, not the sensor. Then you can spray some penetrating fluid. For example, you can go ahead and drive a little bit, pour some oil in here and then try again. That should break it loose. But usually they come out, even though they are very stuck in there. You can actually see how that oil went on the threads, okay? On the threads it's fine, but not on the sensor, so... Now on the sensor connector, we've got four wires, as I said, we've got two white. These usually are gonna be for the heater core. So let's see, let's turn the voltmeter to resistance, 2000 ohms. We've got full continuity in there. I think those are 6 ohms. Okay, 6.5 ohms. I've seen oxygen sensors with almost no resistance and up to 10 ohms. So I suppose this is within spec. It's kind of hard to find information about this car. So I will have to guess according to the other cars because this is going to be a regular O2 sensor. Now, on that connector, we got to check these two wire, okay, the black and the brown one. So let's see, if the connector goes like this, it means that the bottom pins are going to be the reference and the signal wire to the sensor. So I'm going to turn the key in the ignition in the second position and let's measure those two bottom pins. So let's see first the top pins for the heater core of the sensor. Here we should find the car battery. And here we go. We've got the car battery voltage. And on the bottom pins, we should find the reference wire, which has to be a very low a value, which is 0 0.15 volts. Okay. So we've got power at the connector. As you can see, if you go back to the scan tool, you cannot see any values, even on the sensor number two, which is not disconnected. Because this car, you need to have it running in order to see any values from most of the sensors. Another thing to mention, if, for example, you don't get power at the connector, you can go ahead and check the fuses. Usually, you've got this fuse number 23, 
number 22 as well as fuse 19 which are for the sensors now on the box this is fuse number 23 22 and 19 that one the 15 amps one in the worst case scenario you need to go ahead and open up all this wiring harness okay you've got this very thick wiring harness actually you can go under the dashboard and get to the computer connector now hopefully one day i'm gonna find a situation like this with the car so i can show you okay guys thanks for watching if you have questions let me know and i will see you in the next video